garage doors were not originally insulated. I put insulation on them. So these little plastic inserts are just that. They're just a single pane of plastic. Um, they're not double pane. They're not specially coated. Now this plastic does block most UV light. So if I grab my special UV viewing camera and point it at these windows, you'll notice that you can see outside because there's lots of ultraviolet light outside. Um, and enough light is coming through the windows so that you can see what's outside, but it's blocking, you know, above 90% of it. So if I move my camera around and look in my garage, you can see almost nothing. And it's almost dark, but not quite because I have a 3D resin printer I run in my garage and I found in the daytime if I leave the vat open um, I'll get enough UV light to kind of make things congeal on it um, and I don't want that. So you can see here the residue of some of that resin that's stuck to the inside of my vat. That's what I'm trying to avoid happening in the future. So I am going to try and cover these with some cheap window film that blocks 96% of UV light. So I figure the combination of this plastic plus the window privacy film will block a lot more of the UV light, hopefully keeping things from curing too quickly on me when I'm working in here. So in my garage I have this saw blade hanging up and if I point the ultraviolet camera at the saw blade, you can see it reflecting ultraviolet light from the windows. So most of the garage looks dark because there's not that much ultraviolet light in here, but you can see this. And yeah, this guy here, it's not really my UV camera, it's actually a radar speed gun. Um, this is my UV camera. It's basically just a USB webcam that has a filter that blocks all the light except ultraviolet. Enough explanation, let's go to the work montage. Alright, I used a bucket of soapy water to get rid of the bad dirt and cobwebs and everything. And of course, I had to actually clean the outside of the windows too, so I could see where the dirt was left on the inside. I'm only showing you one of my garage doors. Unfortunately, due to a quirk of history, my garage has four garage doors. And the windows in the front have these little decorative plastic tiles covering parts of the plastic square. Now that we have the massive dirt off, we're going to be using ammonia and paper towels to really clean them. Now that I've cleaned the inside and the outside of the windows, I can come back and find smears on the inside I need to clean off again. So the downside of putting light blocking film on your windows is it makes the garage noticeably darker on one side versus the other. And when I get done with everything, the garage will be darker during the daytime. So I'm going to be making use of these artificial lights a little more. There's nothing like putting film on a window to find all little spots of dirt that you've missed on the window. Also, buying the cheapest film on Amazon means you might have marks here. In the film, the first several layers of the roll have this repeating mark, um, and I have a scratch that I thought was a hair initially, but it's actually the film. Um, so the, close, the closer I get to the center of the roll, the better the film is behaving. So if you have enough film, you might consider throwing away the first several loops around just to protect from scratches and things on shipping. Um, I am not a professional film application. This is the first time I've applied window film, I think, maybe second or third. Um, so, you know, it's good enough for a garage. You want to hire a professional if you're doing this for inside your house. So the first square window I did, I measured it, and then I found it easier to take the piece of protective plastic um, that the film comes packaged on and just put that on top of the film and cut around it to get each other one. And then to get these weird shapes here, I've cut 
you know, a pattern out of this guy and I'll just cut the film off of this pattern. Um, and then I'll do smaller patterns for the tinier windows. Realistically, I could take this insulation off and do a full square here, but there's really no point with that plastic grate there on the outside. And with these tiny little half arc triangular pieces, the template just has to be big enough so that it covers that area um, because it doesn't really need to touch any of the edges of the glass here. So this guy here is my template for the full squares and then I'm also making templates for the cutout windows. So my procedure for cutting out one of these templates is to put a liberal application of water down. This stuff sticks to itself really well, so I try to get the factory edge lined up to a factory edge and then just let it roll over. And I'm not trying to stick it super well so I'm not running the air bubbles out. Um, but now I can just trace around this guy. Of course this guy has different sides depending on which one you're doing so you have to make sure you put the template down correctly. The square one doesn't really matter. I definitely made use of that overhead light tilting it back and forth to be able to see where the clear plastic ends on the clear plastic. And you want to hold this thing up before you take it off the um, clear plastic to make sure everything's going to fit in case you need to trim edges a little more. So in this case I don't have anything overhanging. The directions say to cut it too big and then trim it with a razor knife, but because these are plastic, um, I don't want to use a razor knife on them, so I also have this giant um, lip or edge around it, so I don't have to get it perfectly to the edge. Alright, the general instructions are, make sure there's a lot of water with maybe a little bit of dish soap. Line this thing up, get one edge lined up nicely because once it starts going in it's hard to rotate around without a whole bunch of water in there. And then you take the protective plastic and you put it on top of it so you don't scrape the film with your scraper. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up just so that the majority is covered. I like working from the middle out. Again, I'm not a professional film applicator. My windows are horribly dirty. Um, there's other videos on the internet that I'm sure will do a much better job of telling you how to apply window film nicely. So I'm worried I'm running low on film. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to get all four garage doors with this one roll. I'm trying to get two garage doors with it, so I'm using this rounded area from the other template to sneak in just a few extra inches over on that side over there. So keep in mind that you're cutting the bottom of the film, so if you have your template laid down like that guy, you're actually cutting the film to fit this guy over here, and vice versa. Sometimes the trickiest part is getting that protective film back off the top. 
and so fingernails definitely help but you want to be careful not to scrape the film that you're putting up there I bought a roll of film that was 18 inches by 7.8 feet and it got these four windows and those four windows and I got three out of the four of these guys so that one there's not done yet and I'm missing these four over here so time to buy another roll these four windows on the right have the film on it whereas these guys on the left do not so you can see here with a visible light camera how much there's more light coming through visibly um, this doesn't say anything about the ultraviolet light but it does definitely block the amount of light that's coming in these windows now because the ones on the right have the film and the ones on the left do not if you look at this with the ultraviolet you can see that in addition to the visible light it's definitely blocking ultraviolet light as well so the window on the left has the film, the window on the right does not. And you can see here from a visible light standpoint, there's a lot more visible light coming through the window on the right. Now, from an ultraviolet camera standpoint, the film is blocking ultraviolet light because you can see there's a lot more ultraviolet light coming through the window that doesn't have the film. It's not completely opaque to ultraviolet, but it's definitely reducing the amount that's coming through. All right, my second roll of film has arrived. This is Film Goo brand. It's Silver 002. I can't specifically recommend or not recommend this film as it's the only film I've ever really used. So it seems to be going up correctly. I don't know how it compares to other films. I bought it because it was pretty much the cheapest I could find. So, you know, with that ringing endorsement, let's finish doing the rest of the garage door windows. Now that every window in the garage has been tinted with the UV blocking film, we're going to get out the ultraviolet camera and see if we can see a reflection off of this saw blade. So when I pointed the camera at this saw blade, I could still see a little reflection off of it, but I had to get really close and really angle it well to kind of read what was on the blade and really see the blade. I could never see for the whole blade all by itself. So there's less ultraviolet light coming in and reflecting off this blade now. Now the UV camera does have an auto gain function, so when I point at a super dark area the gain goes up, so we're able to detect some UV light, but it's definitely less than before. So this is what it looks like from the north side of the house. And with those windows covered on the back, there's not too much light coming in the back. I really have to get right up to the window to see those light from the windows in the back. And it's kind of difficult to see what's inside, even you know putting this camera right up against the window and shading it. And this is the south side with the sun on it. And so you can see those windows are quite reflective. And if you poke your camera up against it, you can see what's in there, sort of. Um, you can see the other windows on the front. My newly ultraviolet blocked garage, I have a 3D print finishing. So I'm going to set it on this prop to let the resin drip out. And while I'm doing that, I can mostly put this cover over the top here. It doesn't fit perfectly, but it's going to be blocking most of the UV light. So that I can let set for a long time. So right here, I have a 
So this one's a chemistry chapter for sections anyway, since you guys. I'm still going to back the out. So yeah, all the resin out on my mat is still liquid. So yeah, I think the UV has definitely helped. The UV blocking film has definitely helped. As a slightly scientific experiment, I have cut little pieces of my uh, leftover foil, and I'm going to place a drop of resin on each one of these. I'm going to take one of these outside and I'll put it out in the light for, I don't know, five minutes, maybe less, to cure it. Okay, I'm on the north side of my house. I'm in indirect sunlight, so this is kind of in the, the shadow of the house, but we're going to be bouncing ultraviolet light from everywhere onto this guy here. Nothing's coming from the bottom because it's a blocking film, but there's the resin on the top. And, um, well, it looks like it's there's resin coming out of my um, pipette here, and when I put that resin down, it's gummy. This resin here is pretty much gummy on the top, not moving on its own. So, you know, with UV light, this stuff cures, so now it's kind of harder. Yeah, so this bit here is, I can smear it a little bit, but it's mostly hard to the touch. So just being outside for less than a minute pretty much cure this stuff. So that's, you know, outdoor ultraviolet exposure this stuff hardens up pretty quickly all right it's been five minutes since i put these strips out with the resin on them that guy there is flowing downward so it is still liquid doesn't feel solid at all all right so there's at least five minutes of working time let's check back in ten Okay, it's been 10 minutes since I put these guys out. That is still flowing. So yeah, that's still liquid enough to flow. Does not feel at all solid. We're going to check back in a total of 20 minutes, so 10 more minutes. Okay, it's been 20 minutes since I put these guys out here. That one is going down. It is running. Yeah, it's pretty liquid. So yeah, I'm quite happy here. I think that the um, UV blocking film has blot bought me plenty of working time with this UV resin. Okay, it's been an hour since I dropped the resin onto this film. And it's been sitting out in my garage. It's a sunny day outside, but I do have ultraviolet blocking film on the windows of the garage. And this resin is still liquidy. It, it's flowing down. I can scrape through it. So it looks like that UV blocking film is doing a good job on my windows. All right, I'm not going to bother running through more hours of resin hardness. Um, you know, an hour of working time is more than enough for me. I think I might take some of these and put them in my curing station and just kind of see how long it takes to get how hard. Alright, this is my wash and cure station. You can set it for a certain amount of time and it will spin an object and subject it to ultraviolet LEDs. All right, the minimum time I can run this for is 30 seconds. So I put a drop of resin on a piece of foil in there, and we're going to run it for 30 seconds. All right, it is not running. It is hard. I don't know if it's as solid as if I put it outside for 30 seconds, but it has definitely been cured enough to hold its shape on that film. And I can pull the film away from it. 
So that just gives you an idea of the speed of these curing machines as well. Okay, to summarize, I spent about $25 on window film for my garage, which is UV blocking. And I'm pretty happy with that because now I can leave resin out for at least an hour and it's still somewhat runny. I can tell you for sure um, that when I was using the resin in the garage before this, I could you know, have in five minutes or so, I had resin freeze up on my vat, which is bad. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely happy with the performance on this and keeping resin not freezing up while I'm working with it. I do wish that I had put some resin dots on film in the garage before I put the film up just to be able to show you exactly how fast it would cure, but believe me, it was faster than I wanted it to.